welcome. Come right on in, friends. This is Homekeepers. My name's Arthelaine Rippey. If you haven't joined us before, so glad you're with us today. And as we've said many, many, many times on this program, we like to deal with anything and everything that affects the home. And that is anything and everything. And my guest today, he deals with your children. That's a very important part of your home. I'm so glad to welcome back to Homekeepers Bobby Petroselli. He speaks to all kinds of groups, you know, athletic groups, uh, corporations. and, and uh, But the most important thing is that he speaks to young people. And that's not easy. Not everybody can do that. And certainly not everybody can do it well. But this guy can come in and grab their attention. And I, I feel very sorry for our young people today, and I'll tell you why. I grew up in a culture where my beliefs were supported. They were supported by the school. They were supported by the government. Uh, there, there was just a cultural agreement about certain things and morality. And in case you've been asleep, that is gone out the window. And our young people, I think, are they have no moorings. They, they have nothing that they can be attached to. And I'm so thankful that Bobby Petroselli can get into the schools and speak a word into these young people that can be totally life-changing. So if you haven't met him, you will today, and you're going to love him. And I'm going to join Steffi in the kitchen. We're going to make a German potato salad with turkey bacon. This, um, we've done one other German potato salad. And I, I, there's a, a famous one out on St. Pete Beach here. They're all a little bit different, and uh, there was something about the sauce on this one that was very attractive. So we'll, tr we'll try it, and if we like it, we'll let you know, and if we don't like it, we'll let you know, okay? That we're a very honest program here, for sure. Before I join her, I want one more time offer you the cookbook, Too Blessed to be Stressed. And if that doesn't grab you, just the colorful book should. The author was on our show twice, and she made some of the recipes in this book, and I, I must say, I got a ton, I mean a ton of cookbooks in my office, but this one is totally different. She's written things in here to encourage you. There are things that will make you laugh, but every recipe, as I understand, is under 20 minutes. She even gives you a grocery list. It's just a totally unique book by a lady who has sold over 400,000 books. She's a well-known writer, certainly in the Christian world. So this is yours for that gift of at least $20 to the program. I think you'll discover this book is worth far more than that. I hope you'll take advantage of it. And if you use your credit card and debit card like Stephanie does, you call 1-800-229-0059 or uh, write to Homekeepers. That address is on your screen. It's box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. You know, on one of the other shows we were talking about, uh, the fact that you don't know how to write a check hardly anymore. Um, I notice the churches more and more people giving online. And that's what I do. Yeah. My tie every week online. Yeah. I've got grandsons and they get paid. They never see it. It yep. go, goes to the bank account and then they send it to the church. Mm -hmm. This yep. cashless society. Yep. So, so however you do it, uh, we appreciate every penny, every yep. dime you send to this ministry. Okay, so this is German potato salad with why bother bacon? No. <laughs> yeah, she, on one of the shows, she just had this fit because it, the recipe called for turkey bacon. Turkeys do not have bacon on them. Yeah. Just saying. Okay, so anyway. Okay, let's get back to a little bit, though. You were talking uh, that you've got two hogs and a deer in your... In my freezer. We, please. It is chock full. Of please uh, give us a picture of I that. will. I will. But the other thing is, um, have you ever shot one? I have tried. I have attempted. I have not gotten one yet, but it's on my bucket Boy, list. Boy, the day you get it, honey, oh, we're going to have a show. We're going to have a party. Yeah. Does, does your husband get the phone out and take pictures every time you... Oh, yeah, we're taking pictures. Okay. Because oh, yeah, it's okay. fun, you know. Okay, okay so... Okay, we've cooked up a few potatoes. We're going to be gentle with because they're very tender right now. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then you have the fake bacon. Uh-huh. It's actually <laughs> called turkey bacon. She called, should I throw it in here? Yes, please. I have olive oil. I'm going to put a small onion in there. Because this is a warm potato Have salad. you ever eaten it, uh, Ted Peters out on the beach? Yes. 
Have you had their German potato salad? Yes. It's very famous. Yes, it was yeah. very good. Yes. So oh, then, they're, they're smoked fish to die for. Yeah. If you so come good. to uh, Tampa Bay and go to St. Pete Beach, it's Ted, Ted Peters. Peters. And it's been there forever. I think before I came here, and that's uh, just 50 years. Yeah, when you were one. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> uh, and they're not paying us for this. No. So no, no paid promotion. Okay, so onion. I have a quarter cup of chicken broth. I have three tablespoons of white wine vinegar, which I just love in potato salad. And I have mustard, which is everyone. People want to know how much, so I want to make sure I tell them. One tablespoon of whole grain mustard. I have a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of paprika, and. Last but not least, I have a teaspoon of mustard powder. Power. Powder. I'm gonna mix this so all up. So does that thicken up a little bit? Um, I don't think it really thickens up, no. There's not really a thickener in here. Mm. Okay, so we're just gonna heat this up a little bit, let those onions saute a little bit, and then yeah. we have parsley to put on top. Is there okay. anything you wanna talk about for a one minute? Well, the fact that uh, you actually pick up a gun and shoot. Yes. <laughs> shoot things. No, I was wondering um, how your daughter is doing because she was on the show a few years ago. She she didn't really like to do this because uh, she would be welcome anytime. Yes. But she's, a, she's in college she's now. She's in college now, yep. She's going to school to be a nurse. A little more like a, um, I, she's changed it a couple of times, but it's something in the medical field. <laughs> well, everything is so, you know, just so individualized. It's hard to know. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. Um, I remember very well bringing my grandson, Caleb. We're talking about how fast kids grow up and all. Yes. He was just a few weeks old, and Bob DeAndre just had a fit, of just enjoying him so much. The kid is 22 now. Yeah, Alexis was in kindergarten when uh -huh. I started here, and now she's in her third year of college. Yeah. So that, yeah. And I, I have a very strong feeling that there's a lot of viewers <coughs> right now say, yeah, we know what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we've heated this up. You could let the the onion saute a little bit longer, but we have an important guest to get to. I, yeah. You know Bobby, don't you? Yes. Love him. So let me mix that up a little bit. It takes a very special person to talk to young people, I think. Yes. I'm pretty sure if I got up there, they'd think, who is she? And right. What she does knows she have nothing to... about what I'm going that's through. A, that's right. That would be there. Okay. We could use a few more potatoes for all this dressing, but I'm gonna let you taste it. And you put a little parsley over that. Here, let's turn it this way so that juice isn't showing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, you know, I, I might put a little uh, thickener in that. You don't like it, do you? It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but I put a little thickener. But it needs to cook, that, that it needs sauce to cook longer. needs to cook a lot longer. I like the flavor. Mm. Yeah. So it just needs, that, that sauce just needs to really cook. And yeah, because you saw what was in it. Uh, the onion. And real bacon. Chicken broth. Vinegar. Uh, white wine vinegar. Yeah. The vinegar mustard, really Mustard, sugar, it. pepper. You know that's going to taste good if mm -hmm. it can just hang yeah, out Yeah, it needs while. to hang out a little bit longer. Um, make your own decision and look, you get the <laughs> recipe free. <laughs> so Might as well try you, it. You can try it and, and give us your opinion, okay? Yeah. So that information is coming up on your screen. The best way is email. We love getting your email, your nice remarks, but also write to us through the post office. You know, I was in the post office the other day, one station open mm -hmm. and the line almost out the door. Yep. I thought, come on, government, do something right. Just do something right, okay? But you can get your recipe that way if you write to us. The information is coming up on your screen and the uh, address and uh, we'll be glad to send it out to you. And this is German potato salad with turkey bacon. Okay, stay with us. If you haven't met Bobby Petrucelli, they need to get ready, don't they? He's got a lot of energy. Yes, get ready. Get ready, get ready, <laughs> yeah. get ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, information coming up. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to Arthelene at rippy.org.
Oh, it's a pleasure to welcome back to the program Bobby Petroselli. How are you doing? Good to see you, Arthleen. Yeah. Love being with you. Love coming back. You're still out talking to our kids, right? Absolutely. For and 24 years, number one group in America I speak to are high schools, followed by colleges, followed by middle schools, and then basically a little of everything else. You know, I've heard that middle school is where their brains are really hardwired. Absolutely. That uh, That's why they really, they shouldn't get into drugs or anything at that age. It's just... They're still trying to find their identity. And, and you know, the reality of what you just even said is if they begin to go down the road of alcohol or drug abuse, mm -hmm. even middle school and high school, what may take somebody else years to develop alcoholism or drug abuse if they start later in life, mm -hmm. a young person can start developing it within three to six months. Mm -hmm. So that's why it can be that dangerous when it really begins in their life. Uh, I think we need to go back to the very genesis of your ministry. It's yeah. called 10 Seconds, isn't it? My original ministry I started is called 10 Seconds, and what I've incorporated in it over the last 24 years is the whole premise of people understanding their value, identity, and purpose, and that they matter. Mm -hmm. They count. Everybody brings something different to the table, and I love the expression is that we're, we're all created uniquely, not equally. Because the reality is if we equally, and God loved us equally, then there's a measurement to that love. But the fact that we're all created uniquely, there's no carbon copies, mm -hmm. there's no secondary one people like us. We're one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And that's my heart to get that message more than ever out there, to help people identify who they really are. And I think that's the biggest struggle today. People are trying to understand, who am I? Who do, and I say to them, who do you think you are? What are you allowing to identify you? And the simplicity of it is, instead of dealing with internal stuff, we try to deal with it externally by changing our appearance and changing even genders and other things of that nature. I think we start going down paths that bring so much more complication into our life. Yeah, I want to come back to the kids in a minute. What's it, what's it like when you uh, speak to, um, like, team, NFL teams and all that? Well, the reality comes down to the simplicity of my message is that people need to know they matter. And here's a simplicity. Well, aren't they all, yeah, I'm a great football player kind of person? They're still trying to find where they fit into the scheme of things. And one of the biggest things I even talk, when I talk to a football team is about, you know, every time I used to coach high school football, when my quarterback got cocky and arrogant, I told my offensive lineman, you're not blocking for him on the next play. And I joke about it. After my quarterback ate a pound of dirt, I pull him off the field and says, excuse me, something you want to tell me? Yeah, coach, I'm sorry. Fellas, I can't do it without you. got you. the message. That's right, because everybody has their <laughs> role and responsibility. But coming to what I talk about more than ever is I'm speaking to the Oakland Raiders this past fall before they play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And Who I, won? I, I uh, should know the that. The Oakland Raiders. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> but anyway Pray um, for the Bucs. I, I speak to Derek Carr, hang out with the quarterback, and I kind of picked on him a little during the presentation. A phenomenal, young, amazing Christian man. And I said, Derek, every time you run this particular play, it's called a tight end drag, you throw the ball high and wide. And I said, Derek, is high and wide the problem? He pauses for a moment. He goes... You know, Bobby, that's a good question. It's not the main problem. It's part of the problem. He says, so talk to me. He said, well, my mechanics might be off. My fundamentals might be off. I could be throwing the ball high. I could be turning my head, throwing my shoulder. And I said, bingo. And I said, life is no different. And then I brought in, because it was a Christian event that I was doing here also, I said, the church has missed this. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, you know what we've done in the lives of people? We go after the high and wide instead of why they're throwing it high and wide. So in other words, we go after sin and bear with me. Sin is a symptom to a deeper issue. And God understands that because Jesus said as simple as could be, Arthleen, I have come to heal the brokenhearted. And since God has really exploded this revelation in me, even when I go to churches and faith-based um, presentations, the response is overwhelming because I'm not going after your behavior. Your behavior is a symptom of a deeper issue. So I don't want to come to somebody and say, okay, Arthurine, pray with me. Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, I love you, amen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not going after your brokenness. That's what Jesus came to do. Heal the brokenhearted, set the captive free, give us victory over the sin in our life and open our spiritual eyes to see who we are who he is in our life, and who we are in him. That's the key. 
wow, I think you just heard a great sermon <laughs> in, a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, and you also speak for uh, corp corporations. Absolutely. Because I'm guessing now, you can tell me I've already, your message is basically the same, but you've got to put it in a whole different box. Absolutely. The You Matter message is simple. You know, I even came to the understanding to say this to you, Arthleen, how I take John 3.16 and have a little different spin on it, okay? Would you, Arthleen, ever spend more money on something you think it's worth? Would you ever? So in other words, if you think that sweater's worth 50 bucks, hypothetically, you're not going to go spend $150 on it. Mm -hmm. Nobody, usually in their right mind, will do that unless it's a supernatural thing God's showing us. Well, God's no different. But guess what? And here's what I like to say to people, and I'll share with you. I'll say, Arthleen, you mattered so much to God, you have such great value in God's eyes that he wouldn't spend more money on you than you're worth. All the money in the world couldn't buy you. It took the blood of his son to buy you. Because guess what? Mm. If you were not that valuable and you were a so-called piece of junk, then I'll be up front with you. Then Christianity is a hoax and it's a lie. God ain't sending his son to die for a piece of junk. I sure as heck wouldn't be sending my son to do anything that is not worth doing. God is no different. That's how valuable and incredible we are in his sight. That's how much we matter to him. Wow. There's... There's such a line between what the world, and I think, I think this is the, one of the worst messages that's ever come, especially to young people, self-esteem. It's a bunch of baloney, and they spent millions of dollars putting it in the school system, teaching the children to have self-esteem, believing that if they felt good about themselves, they'd get good grades. But you got to study if you want to get good grades. Absolutely. Um, and so we've got this fake thing. And I think it's hard for us as human beings who, who know our frailties pretty well to possibly comprehend what you just said. Well, you know, the reality is it's more driven. It should be driven by self-worth. Self-esteem mm -hmm. is different. Self-worth is when we, number one, understand who we are and our identity and that there are no carbon copies. Then what we bring to the table, nobody else can do it. Our fingerprints, footprints, DNA are proof of that. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is the more we understand our self-worth, in other words, I bring something different to the table that nobody else can. And as I proceed to operate in my gifting, in my talent, in my ability, then my self-worth becomes edifying and exhorted because that's what God was not above others, but it gives me to a place to say, hey, I have a practical purpose. And I share this with the church. The real purpose I have as a believer is to bring healing to the brokenhearted, to help set the captive free and to give sight to the blind. Yeah. And, and that's not pride. No, absolutely not. Uh, to have a, a sense of what I call a sense of self. Um, that's not pride. No. I like to talk to you about the kids, though. And I said at the top of the show, because I got eight great grandchildren now, so I've got a lot of uh, history. I did grow up in a system that the government supported, the school supported. You know, uh, you could say the Lord's Prayer. And um, there was an agreement between the church and the school and the government and all um, differences in denominations. So, but there was basically cultural sameness. Boy, that's gone. Now you have, you're speaking to kids whose parents are divorced. I mean, they come from the most horrific, heartbreaking situations, and we put them in our public schools. And here comes Bobby Petroselli. You know, the toughest thing this what fall... What do you say to him? The toughest thing this fall I dealt with, and I've been in education for 35 years, Arthur teacher, coach, counselor, now a speaker, mm -hmm. and one of the toughest stories I ever heard, because I get mobbed by kids afterwards, Thank mm -hmm. you, Bobby, for telling it. me I mattered. Thank you for telling me yeah. it wasn't my fault. Thank you for telling me that my broken heart does not have to define me. My brokenness does not have to chase after me to define me. Mm -hmm. I could put an end to it. Well, this one precious girl comes up to me, Arthleen. My heart broke. Broke. Right there, I cried hysterical. Literally held her in my arms, and she cried on my shoulders, just thanking me. She said, Bobby, I was talking to my mother on the telephone. She called me at school. As I'm talking to her on the phone at school, I hear the whole thing. And I go, what do you mean you hear the whole thing? 
She goes, I hear my mother commit suicide as she's talking to me on the phone. God help us. My heart breaks. And, and here's where I'm going, Arthleen, because when I go into the schools, I'm limited on saying Jesus or God. But if you're sitting in a public school assembly, you can see the love of God is pouring out. I'm speaking to their spirit. I'm sowing seed. I'm watering seed. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is I'm going after their brokenness, not after their behavior. And that to me is even the same in the church. Sometimes we're not set free because I keep on going after sin and behavior. Wait a minute. We're not here to condone it but we need to go after the brokenness. Just like as I shared with you, I'm wearing these sunglasses, okay? My son Aaron, who's a sophomore at Liberty University, he he's home during the summer for four months doing some work and doing some ministry stuff. He actually started his whole ministry called Yahweh. You are worth it because there were so many kids he was finding on social media wanted to kill themselves. He started reaching oh out to God, them to say, yeah. you are worth it. You're worth it to God. You're worth it to me. You're worth it to this world. Don't give up. So... He befriends this special needs kid in his school that has autism from the school he went to here. Well, this young man comes over the house all the time. Aaron is wonderful to him. He, like me, Aaron, like me, loves special needs kids, Down syndrome kids. You know what I tell people all the time? You know my favorite shirt I wear? I love homies with extra chromies. That's one of my favorite <laughs> shirts to ever wear because I love all kids. Uh -huh. They're all God's creation, and God's desire is to use all people. Well, anyway, this one young boy, I take him, Aaron, and Aaron and his girlfriend, we go out to get dinner this one night. And we're coming back, and it's the last time we're all going to be together in August. That's why I'm wearing the sunglasses. This is how they were that day as I'm driving in the car. And this young boy says, Mr. Bobby, could I say a prayer? Absolutely. He prays, dear God, please bless Mr. Bobby and his family and all that he does. And then the second part of his prayer, I lost it, Arthur, and I'm driving. I have to drop my sunglasses because I'm crying hysterical. Listen, I'm Italian. I cry over everything. I cry over only having Required. two slices of pizza instead of three <laughs> slices of pizza. Trust me, I'm not afraid to cry. Well, I'm driving, and here's what his prayer was. And he's looking at me, Mr. Bobby, what's wrong? Tears pouring down my face. My son Aaron's laughing hysterical at me because he knows I cry over everything. But here was the second part of his prayer. Oh, and dear God, please, that Aaron is now going back to Liberty University. Can you please send somebody that will be my friend and want to spend time with me like Aaron does. You know what he was simply asking, Arthleen? Mm. God sent somebody that will tell me, you matter. Mm -hmm. Everybody is crying out for that simple thing. I want to know that I matter. I count that what has happened to me doesn't have to define me. My parents split up. That doesn't change who I am. It's what I experienced. My definition of who I am is not how I look, not the uh, sports I play, not even the grades I get. That's part of my life, but that's not who I am. I am created fearfully and wonderfully in the image of my heavenly father. He has a destiny and a plan. And the last part on this, I always tell people, a thief, you never see a thief, and I work with homeless people. You don't see a thief holding up a homeless person. I'm not being disrespectful. Why? Because in their mind, that thief has nothing of value. Satan is no idiot. We are not Satan's enemy. God is Satan's enemy, but watch this. What does God value the most? His children, his creation. So what does Satan do? He tries to rob God's children of their destiny, of their value, their identity, and purpose. And if he can rob them, then God's kingdom can yeah, flourish yeah. on this earth. I wonder how many of those kids, when it's all over, look at you and wish you were their dad. I'm touched that you say mm -hmm. that, Earthly. No, I... I, I we, we, we have a fatherless uh, generation in, in so many respects. And I, th I think of these kids and, uh, in first place, all the filth and the clobbers their mind um, coming, you know, through the, through the Internet and so forth. And then a lot of them for broken homes. They, bathe, they blame themselves for that. Absolutely. These kids are piled on and piled on, and then you go to school, and it's pretty godless. Um, and, and I look that, thank God that he's got a Bobby Petroselli that can go in there, and only eternity will reveal how many lives, because to me it only takes one moment, one message, one sentence to completely turn a life around. Absolutely. And I, th I thank God that, uh, that you're there to do it because it breaks my heart. What, what have we raised here that because of a presidential election, they have to bring in uh, Play-Doh and, and teddy bears because kids are so upset because their candidate didn't win. And uh, we have 
we're always having counselors for something. We're raising a generation. You know, I remember when teenagers stormed the beaches of Normandy. Absolutely. And what have we got here? I mean, we have something that only God can bring life to. Well, you know, you know, we have, I like to say this, adults that act out, and even sometimes in my own shortcomings, really all it is, is unresolved brokenness from my childhood that was never addressed and truly looked at. So, you know, even when I have church services and I preach and I minister in churches, one of the simplest things I do is I ask the people in the congregation, no matter who you are, where you're from, let's do something so simple. Pretend you're taking your heart out, the deep who you are, and you're taking that heart and you're presenting it to the Father. Because here's what happens. When our broken heart is not healed, Arthleen, we take the pieces of the broken heart. So watch this. It's not the pain that mm -hmm. is hurting us. It's the message behind the pain that tells us we don't matter. So here's what happens. We take those pieces of the broken heart, and that's why the Word even says there is pleasure in sin for a, for a season. season. Why? Because now I'm sinning and I'm taking my broken heart piece because for this moment, I'm anesthetizing my pain with drug abuse, alcohol abuse, sexual abuse, crime, violence. Right, right. You get the picture. It this anesthetizes so for the moment but it's not truly healing it. And then what we do is we go after behavior. No, I want to talk about behavior, but before I talk about behavior, I want to address your broken. And, and I think they get that. Absolutely. I, think they get, I want to mention, uh, this is the first time I've had a chance, we're almost finished here, uh, the website. Um, I think a lot of church leaders have just heard this man. Boy, he would be great in your church, your school. Uh, Christian schools uh, need a voice like this. Absolutely. For sure. But I, I can't feel real optimistic uh, knowing what these young people and the ones that you talk to uh, growing up unless there, there is uh, just a divine intervention there because every single thing is against them. And then you have the other side where uh, they don't, you know, they get a participation trophy. They don't get any real world experience. And we're, we're out of time, but uh, please come back. I, I'd like to, to do Love more to um, really ad address the young people. Those are the ones that break my heart. And that's why we have homekeepers. I mean, if, if the homes were right, they wouldn't need you. Absolutely. You know? And if, if the family was not so important and the home was not so important, the enemy would not go after it because he exactly. knows how he devalues it. Thank you for telling everybody they matter. Thank yep. you, Arthur. Yep. We're out of time. I'm sorry we are, but please, please join me next time. Uh, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. A lot of these things can be changed right in the home. That's where it should be. See you next time. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.